Hey, how's it going everyone? Greg here with RC Driver and I have an interesting video for you guys today. I am going to do some detail work on a Traxxas TRX4. Uh, Traxxas actually saw my video on the Traxxas TRX4. They saw the unboxing video, they saw the action video, they thought it was pretty cool, but they did notice that I did not like the windows being blacked out. And so they got a hold of me and they said, hey Greg, how about we send you a body and that way you could paint it up and you don't have to worry about black windows. And so the body showed up and I was really excited and then I was like, oh, I got to transfer everything over. No, nope, they took care of that for me and they sent me everything I'm going to need to build a completely separate body. And here are all the parts right here. Check out all the stuff that makes up the Traxxas TRX4 Defender body. It's incredible. You know what? Why don't we just go over all this stuff? Let's just see all the different things that go into a Traxxas TRX4 Defender body. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. There's there's people that really love this body and there's people that, you know, it doesn't really fit the bill for them. But I am actually a fan of it. I really, really like it. And so I'm really excited to, to paint it up with my own color scheme, clear windows. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that really goes into it. And people say like, oh, the body is so heavy. That's because there's a lot of detail stuff here. I mean, a lot of parts, as you can see. So actually, let's just start off with this like roof rack stuff. So here's here's one bag. This is the top roof rack. Then we've got the cage. It's 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 a separate package and, and it comes with all the different hardware you're going to need to install that. This here is the fender wells for over each wheel, obviously. Uh, let's see, over here we've got, uh, this looks like the spare tire carrier and uh, oh, there's just so much stuff. Here, here we go, we've got the fender flares. We've got some inner body parts, I believe that's what these are. I didn't even know, there's just so much stuff that makes up this body, it's absolutely incredible. Oh, here's a snorkel, we've got the, the side mirrors, and lots and lots of hardware. So, you know, this is kind of where some of that weight comes in. I mean, there's a, just a lot of stuff to bolt on uh, all the detail parts, and, and what? well, it makes it look cool, number one. Number two, it adds a little bit of weight, but uh, you know, that's that's the thing that people need to uh, realize. If you want a very cool scale looking body, this is the stuff that comes with it. You gotta bolt on all this different stuff. And uh, you know, people are uh, kind of criticizing Traxxas for the weight of the body. However, I've seen a lot of vehicles out there with probably just as heavy of a body. Those guys that are like making custom bodies, they're using hard bodies and then filler to fill them in 3D printed bodies and then using filler on it and then painting it and then adding the scale accessory. I mean, that all adds up to probably just as much as this thing weighs. So, uh, you know, again, if you want a cool scale look, there's some weight involved to it. All right, let me get back to this. So we've got some, the grill parts are separate. Uh, the rear tail lenses are separate, more hardware. Uh, I've got wheel nuts and then I'm gonna save this for last. Uh, the sent to spare tire for the back. It comes in a pair. And then these are the roto packs. So there's there's different roto packs now. It looks like they sent me a couple different versions. So this is the this is the roto pack that comes with the truck. Uh, so we've got red, but now they have these optional uh, yellow, which I believe is diesel, uh, and then white, which I believe is water or is blue. No, blue's kerosene, isn't it? But anyway, they've got uh, the white, yellow, blue, and I think there's even black now. Uh, and then we've got the uh, spare jack that goes on the back. And I think this is available in black now as well. That was just released. And then they were nice enough to send me the light kit for it. So I am gonna put lights on this thing. Uh, but basically I'm really looking forward to just making this a pretty cool truck. And what I think I'm actually gonna go with, uh, I kind of like green. I've, I had a, a import show car that was green and I, I'm kind of into the green stuff. So I'm gonna go with like a British green on this with the, uh, the off the off white roof and uh, you know still keep it within the look of a de scale defender and uh, just go and show you all the different parts that go and bolt on as I build this thing. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me. What's really cool is this body does come with the decals and it comes with the window mask. So I'm really excited that I don't have to go and cut out all the different windows on here. That's very cool to see. But uh, again, I have a lot of work ahead of me. I might as well get right into it. So as you can see here, I've jumped ahead on preparation of the Traxxas Defender body. And what I've done so far is I went and washed it out. That's the first thing you want to do with the Lexan body. You want to go ahead, uh, go to a big sink, uh, put some dishwashing detergent soap in there uh, for your, your plate dishes. Uh, use a, a like a mild soap and make sure it doesn't have like that hand softening aloe stuff in there. Um, and, and put a couple drops in there, use some warm water and use a paper towel to really scrub out the inside of the body. Reason why you want to do that is, is sometimes there's mold agents uh, like oils that get stuck to the body during the, the mold process. 
And what can happen is, is when you go and spray your paints on there, it hits that oil, it kind of separates and fish eyes and stuff like that. It can ruin the body. So make sure you take the time to do that extra step of washing the inside of the body uh, and you should have a, an easy time spraying the paints. All right, when that was done, obviously I dried it out really well. And then I went ahead and I started to apply the window masks. Now Traxxas includes these window masks and I have to give Traxxas credit here. They gave you the best possible mask they could have with this body. It's a true masking tape type material. Uh, it's die cut from the factory. So all you have to do is peel the windows out for the particular window you're gonna stick it to and stick it on there. And the adhesive on these uh, window masks, they, it is really, really sticky. So uh, props to Traxxas for that, love it. Uh, much better than those vinyl masks that some other companies include. Okay, now that the window masks are on, I can start planning out how I'm gonna paint the body. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna spray the white roof first. Yep, a lot of people say, make sure you spray your dark colors first. Well, as long as you do uh, the process correctly, you can actually go and spray uh, lighter colors first. And that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna spray the white first. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is, is I put a new roll of masking tape and I'm gonna use that nice new clean edge on the roll of masking tape to mask off the line of the roof uh, from the bottom. I could try to do it from the top, but getting the masking tape into this curve, it could kind of distort and shift the, the masking tape as I go along. So I'm actually gonna come up from the bottom and use that sharp line here from the bottom. And then I'm gonna cover the whole lower portion of the body because that's gonna be green and I'm gonna spray the white first. And what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use this Tamiya PS1 paint, uh, polycarbonate paint. Make sure you have the right paint uh, for Lexan. It is a special paint. Uh, and I'm gonna put a couple of coats of white on the top here. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go and spray it with a gold. And the reason why I'm gonna spray it with the gold is, is I don't want that, that really bright white. I mean, some of these bodies, uh, some of the bodies I looked at online, sorry, the real cars that I looked at online have a pure white roof. Um, and some of them have this little bit of an antique to it, an antique type of white. And that's kind of the look I wanna go for. And so what this gold is gonna allow me to do is it's gonna kinda back that white. It's gonna give it a touch of an antique -y look, but it's also gonna back it enough to where when I do go and spray the green, the green isn't gonna go through the white. So this is gonna be like my blocking opaque type of paint. And it serves another purpose of giving it that little antique look. And so what I've done here is I've actually gone ahead and tested this. Uh, so I sprayed a couple of coats of white on this piece of plastic, just a spare piece of Lexan. And I actually went and backed it with copper uh, to try that and then I tried it with gold and with the gold behind it it gives it that little bit of that antique that I'm looking for uh, so I think it's going to come out pretty cool and you know it's better than going and trying to custom mix some some airbrush colors and airbrushing it you could of course do that but uh, I'm always in a rush so I want to do it with spray cans and that's my little trick to get that cool color uh, with these spray cans all right so now I'm going to go and jump ahead here I'm going to go mask everything off I'm going to start spraying my colors and I'll show you what the roof looks like when it's done and there it is, the white roof. I think it came out pretty good. What do you guys think? Now, I did come up with a couple tips along the way while I was spraying this, and it's some tips that I've mentioned before in some of our other videos. Uh, but one of the things that you need to do, actually, before I even start that, what you need to do is you need to wear a mask and safety goggles. I always want to point that out in videos when you're using spray paints. It's always good to do that. So make sure you wear definitely a mask when you're painting. Now, uh, what I did here is I sprayed about four coats of white on here, probably about five actually. Um, and one of the things that you really, really need to do is warm up the can of paint. Now, the reason why you wanna do that is, is it has this little ridge here. And that ridge, it's really hard for the paint to get into that ridge. So by warming up the can under some warm water, uh, what that's gotta do is it's gotta build up pressure inside the can and it's gotta allow the spray to come out in a finer mist. And that finer mist will help get into that little ridge around the roof line here. Uh, so kind of an important step and keep warming up the can as you go. Uh, every, every coat that you put on there, warm up the can again, just to make sure that you get that fine spray that will give you a nice finish. All right, so once that was done, I went and I actually sprayed the gold as I talked to you about before. So there's the gold in there and it didn't really change the color much. I mean, there's just a, probably a, just a light tint difference between the, just the straight bright white and what I got here for the final look. Uh, so it's just very slight, but what it also does, as I mentioned before, it gives me that opaque block uh, that won't allow the green to show up through uh, when I do go and spray this stuff. So actually the next step is I'm gonna rip all the masking tape off and I'm gonna go ahead and spray this green here. 
Now with the green, I have this PS22 racing green. I think this is pretty close to the look I'm going for. I did find a picture online of a Defender that I'm looking to replicate, and I think this is gonna be pretty close. Uh, so I'm gonna spray a couple coats of this, and when I'm satisfied with the look of the paint, with the coverage of the paint, then I'm gonna decide what I wanna do next. Do I want the color to be a little bit lighter? Is it just right? Do I need it a little bit darker? Uh, so that's why I kind of have some of these colors here. So maybe if I need to make it a little bit lighter, I'll go and I'll use this lighter green behind it, and hopefully that will give it the tint that I'm looking for. So you gotta think about backing them before you move on to your next color. Um, and it's kind of a little trick to do with spray cans. Uh, if you're doing uh, painting with an airbrush, uh, that's a little bit of a different story because you could kind of go and tint the paints as you go along, uh, put a couple different drops of colors in to, to alter the, the paint color. Uh, but with sprays, you kind of got to think about backers and that's how you get your, your, your custom paint colors. So I might go and back it with this particular green. If I think it needs to go even brighter, uh, get a, a lighter tint out of it, I might just go and back it with the white. Uh, if I think it needs to go darker, I might just go and back it with the black. So you kind of got to eyeball it as you go along, kind of think about what the colors are going to do to interact with each other uh, and what that final color is going to be. So I have a lot of masking tape to pull off. I'm going to rip all that off. I'm going to give this body a healthy dose of more paint and I'll show you what the final color came out to be and I'll give you some tips on what I found out during the process. Well, after a lot of painting, I'm finally done. And I used about a can and a half of green on this thing uh, to get it to the point where I really like the color. And I, I think it came out pretty good. I didn't wind up using the lighter green that I mentioned before or the white. I actually wound up just uh, spraying the black on there. Uh, wanted to darken it up a little bit from what I had, but uh, it stayed pretty much the green out of the can. Pretty close to the Defender that I found uh, online that I was trying to replicate. Uh, so I think it came out pretty good. So the next step is to go and pull all of the overspray film off and I'll pull the window masks off and everything. And then I'm gonna move on to the decals. Now Traxxas gives you some pretty cool decals to go and put on the body. And as you could see, it's got the blacked out windows. And well, that's what I was trying to get away from. So actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go and put these decals on. All the windshield decals on and, and of course the lights and vents and everything like that. Uh, and then what I'm actually gonna do so I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna go back and I'm going to cut out the black areas. And what that's gonna do is it's going to leave the basically the window trim uh, behind once I pull off the black sections. And so it'll give me a little bit more uh, scale detail having uh, the window moldings around everything and I think it'll really help the look of it. And then I'll get my clear windows as well. All right, time to do some decal work. My grand plan of using the windows didn't really work out. So what happened here is I went and I took off all the window masks and I went and I placed the window decals on. And when I did, I noticed that there is a gap around the outside. So you could see uh, basically through the windshield, through some of these windows. And so the outer trim of the window didn't really work out as planned. You could kind of see, you know, gaps around everything, but you know, it is what it is. And just, you know, now you guys know that the window masks are larger than the window decals. And so maybe you could do something different. Maybe you could use the window mask and cut a thin line around the window mask and use that as your window trim instead. But uh, I'm just gonna keep pushing forward with it. I think it still looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna leave it. So the next step is to actually put on uh, all the parts to the body. And I have my TRX-4 over here so I could kind of use it as a guide since I don't have an instruction manual on how to put this all together. Uh, kind of took a look at all the parts. I laid them out all back here. And from what I could tell, I gotta put the top cage on first and then I'm gonna build the inner uh, sections of the body because that's where the lights attach. So once I get that all together, I'll show you guys what's going on. So I got the upper portion of the cage together and it's looking pretty cool so far. Actually, what I did was that I went and printed out the exploded view of the body and that gave me all the details of where I needed to put what size screws. So this was really helpful to do. Um, and then I, of course I used my, my older TRX for to just make sure everything was going in the right place. But it's pretty simple to get everything together. And like I said, so far it's looking pretty cool. So the next step was actually to go and start working on the inner fender wells. And as you can see, I started to put them together here. There are a couple different uh, parts bags you're gonna need if you're buying everything separately. And I'm gonna list all the part numbers for all this stuff in the description below. So make sure you check that out if you're looking for some of these parts, looking for all these parts. But the inner fender wells just don't go right in. Uh, actually, what I'm gonna do is I have the light kit and in the light kit instructions, it tells you to go and remove the fender well. So since I'm putting this together from scratch, it kind of works out 
uh, really well. So what I'm gonna do now is go and start to install all of these lights and start with the well lights. Um, so it'll light up all the wheel wells. Uh, I also have the headlights obviously come with the kit and the, the power system and even the light bar comes with it So that'll look pretty cool up here I do have to drill a small hole in the roof So I got that to do and while I'm doing all that I do have to install some other parts too, like the front grill and the snorkel and everything and, and just start wrapping up a lot of this stuff um, And then once I have all the lights in here, I could go and put the fender wells in so I still have a lot of work to do I'm gonna go and start working on all that. And after I'm done with some of the next steps, I'll show you how it's going. Things are really starting to come together here. So I went ahead and I put all of the well lights in and now I could go and install these finally. And that requires the fender flare, so that will all come together. And once, once I have that all in, I could go and start to clean up my wiring. Uh, I've got the headlights and taillights in and those went in perfectly. I mean, everything just fits together nice and perfect. Uh, you know, no customization whatsoever. The, the fit is incredible. So I really like that. I also put the light bar in. What I did up top here is I actually just cut a slot. I used my Dremel tool and I made a slot rather than a large hole to fit the connector through just so it looks a little bit neater. Try to make it as clean as possible. i uh, got my snorkel on there. I've got my mirrors on and uh, there's the taillights out back. I still have to put some decals on. Uh, and then also what I did was I installed the power module here and that will power all the lights and everything and just ran the wires nice and neat over into the receiver box. That installation was pretty easy, a little time consuming, probably took about, you know, eight minutes to put that together. I'm really coming down to the end here. Um, I have to put the spare tire carrier in. I mentioned the fender flares. Uh, I've got a spare tire to put on the spare tire carrier and then I gotta put the fuel canisters on and I think I'm gonna go with the white and then I have a red jack to go along with it. So I have a little bit more work to do. I didn't really come up with any tips uh, as far as installation goes, other than you know maybe slotting uh, that hole over there for the light bar to make it look like a nice clean installation. But other than that, like I said, everything fits together perfectly. All right, now I'm gonna go wrap this thing up and then I think I'll show it to you completely finished so we can take a look at what these lights look like. And I think the rest of this installation is gonna go really smooth. And I'm finished. What do you guys think? I think it came out pretty cool. It was a lot of work. There is a lot of pieces to this body, but I think in the end it came out very cool. A little bit uh, brighter green than I was expecting. I was hoping to really replicate that truck that I found online, but I still think it came out pretty cool. There was really no surprises in finishing this thing up. Uh, the only thing I think I could suggest was just to make sure when you're putting the fender flares on, make sure you line up all the holes with the fender flares sitting in the bag. They kind of are not shaped exactly the way uh, the inner fenders are. So you just got to kind of line up the holes and, and that takes an extra second or two. And then just routing the wiring, uh, you know, take your time to make sure there's no wires in the way and kind of tape them aside if you need to. Uh, I got a couple pieces of tape in there, but what's really cool is Traxxas has all these little hoops on the cage brackets and you can put zip ties through there and it secures a lot of the wires, makes things a lot neater. And, and in the end, it's very cool. Even the upper light bar has two different modes there. We got the bright and then we got the low and that's really cool out back here. Got the taillights going on and I think the back came out great with the white canister and uh, you know, obviously the spare tire and jack looked pretty cool as well. But overall, I'm really excited on how this thing looks. Now all that's left is to head outside and get it dirty.